Well, Senate is planning for a showdown with the Senate President Bukola Saraki over his continued stay in office despite his defection from the op to the opposition, the People's Democratic Party. May have been caught off guard in their plan as the National Assembly has not decided to reconvene today, but hold a joint session to starve off impeachment of the leaders of the Senate. Now looking down at reports on this story. Observers said last night that both sessions of the National Assembly cannot meet to consider a bill. The senators, it was gathered, had perfect plans to impeach the Senate president using the occasion of an expected emergency resumption of both the Senate and the House of Representatives today. But a close source to the leadership on the National Assembly stated two reports that the National Assembly would not reconvene plenary as stated by the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yusuf Lassun, to consider the budget of the INEC for 2019's general elections. Chukudi, let's even just start off with the basic one that every viewer wants to know. Can this possibly un and unfortunately postpone Nigeria's 2019 elections? Well, I think that, I mean, it's really sad because you have a budget and the budget is so that you can be prepared for the action that you're supposed to carry out. Now, when the budget stalls, there is a problem. First, if we're going to trace the source or the origin of this problem, like I said yesterday, from about three years ago, we already knew the date for the 2019 elections. Yep. And I recall that over a year ago, I next set out a timetable. I already knew from last year that on the, from the 18th of August, political parties can begin to conduct primaries. Mm -hmm. Now, why did it take us all this while to present the budget to the National Assembly, knowing well that the Constitution gives them the power of appropriation? But that is not the issue. Let us look at the main issue. Yeah. One week before they, um, they proceeded on recess, yeah. President Mamadou Buhari sent, because it's the, the, the estimates emanate from the executive, yeah. he sent it. They were supposed to sit twice, they were plenary twice, before they proceeded on recess. So a lot of people believed that, you know, they would have dealt with this issue. But we know what happened, and that's why I'm dressed like this today. Those that went to block, went to block. But the truth is, we have gone from governance to politicking. It is now about the interest of the political gladiators. Now, people are saying we must impeach Dr. Bukola Saraki because the All Progressives Congress is in the majority. And we cannot have somebody in the APC, sorry, in the PDP, preside over us. Why others, are saying, others are saying no. The Constitution says that the senators shall from amongst themselves, and we are from amongst ourselves, elected him. If you want to even impeach him, have two thoughts. And two thoughts of 109 is 73. Do you have 73? No. But the, the sad thing about this is, the interest of these people is now affecting the collective interest of the Nigerian people. Now, what some people are saying is, we are going to have a joint sitting. That is, the people from the Red Chamber, we go to the Green Chamber, the lower, uh, the House of Representatives, and sit. Yeah. And they say it is only one item that will be on the agenda, the 2019, uh, the budget for the 2019 elections. But other people are saying, no, we want to sort the issue of who is going to preside over the Senate. And as a result of this politicking, interest of the two major political parties, because we we'll begin to call their name, the interest of these two major political parties, the PDP and the APC, we are seeing a stall or a stagnancy in the activity of government. And it is really unfortunate. Now, the first question you asked about the 2019 elections, we might just look at it and say, no, now, it can happen, it mm -hmm. will happen. But you must understand that politicians, a lot of them, if they want to destroy it so long as it affects their interest, they will go ahead and do so. And as Nigerians, we must begin to take lessons from this particular pathetic and unfortunate situation yeah. to know that some people do not deserve to represent us. You cannot claim to represent us, and yet you don't want to protect our interests. How now? Honestly, when I started the show today, I literally said you have four days left to get your PVC. At the end of the day, Chukudi, sometimes I look at these stories and I think about it. Do the 80-plus million Nigerians living in absolute poverty really deserve for all of this to be the headlines of the news 24 7 they have infiltrated the country with their campaigning it's right? most of, it's most unfortunate and if we are going to i'm going to be realistic we're going mm. to continue like this if we do not begin to see ourselves as stakeholders in the project of building a new nigeria now the reason why i say we must build a new nigeria is because there is a generational shift. Mm. Look at Nigeria's population demographics. 198 million people, over 60% are 30 years and below. This is a new generation. Now, we are looking at an estimated 110 million people. These people must play a part 
in charting a course for their future. And yeah. if these people fold their arms and say that they are not serious, you would have unscrupulous elements of the political class continue to perpetuate themselves in power. That is why they are going to keep blocking. That is Absolutely. why this party versus that party, while the majority of Nigerians will continue to wallow in abject poverty and penury. But Chukudi, do you think that the main problem that we're having in Nigeria today is based on everything going on in our politics? Or can we also speak about our international relations as well? Because there is so much influence coming into Nigeria from states outside of the country. And unfortunately, it seems as though our foreign policies are not poor enough to actually support our citizens and stop people from infiltrating the country. Is this not just as much of an issue in Nigeria right now? It's a very, it's a very complex situation. Mm. But when I look at the solutions to these problems, it's really very simple mm -hmm. now. Have you ever heard, I always say it, yeah. have you ever heard of any PDP senator APC Senator, mm. PDP Honorable, APC Honorable, let me call another political party so that they will not say I'm oh, yeah, firing no. them too much. APGA <laughs> and ADC, the latest bribe. Have you ever heard any of them come out to say we have not received our running cost? No. Have you heard any governor in Nigeria, whether this party or that party, come out to say I have not received my security vote? No. What do we hear? We have not paid salaries. It's very unfortunate. We have not do, we done this. We have not done that. It's we have not done this. We have not. See, if Nigerians do not rise up, and I always insist, when I say rise up, I don't mean there should be violence. What you know, it will be very difficult for an unscrupulous politician, because that's what they do now. Yeah. A lot of these people, if you tell them to stop, if you tell them to go to an office and sit down behind a desk, many of them will faint. Yeah. Because they cannot survive. I gave you the example last week of somebody who, since I, since I was growing up as a child in Nigeria, he served in every government, whether military, whether civilian. And he got to the point where the person said, I love my country so much, I want to serve. I will even do it for free. Eh? <laughs> we don't want you to do it for free. We want people who own their conscience yeah. to work passionately for the Nigerian people. And Nigerians must understand that our country is so abundantly blessed with human and natural resources. People that are very sensible. I, I, I put it to you that the foundation of so many developing economies is essentially as a result of the ingenuity, creativity, and ideas of Nigerians. Absolutely. Now, if Nigerians add value to other societies, my younger brother completed his master's program in Canada. Mm. He told me that there are parts of Canada you go to, you will think you are in Obalende, you will think you are in Owere. Because Nigerians have gone there. It's like now, even in London. Do you know that some parts of London you go to? I just go there if I want suya. I go there if I need to go and collect will, new SIM cards. You will think you are in yeah. uh, <laughs> Now, do you know what they do? Yeah. They get our very best. They get our very best. Mm. And when they get these people into their society, because it is a society that operates on law and order mm. and an organized society, they get you to conform. I told Absolutely. my friend who told me that when he came to Nigeria, he was surprised to see Masheto, CB, do not urinate here, order by police. The guy was shocked that of all the problems that, you know, people will put order by police to make you afraid, even though we are not really afraid of them because people like SARS, they have casted themselves. Now, if the police is so not bothered with issues and it is oh, do not urinate here that they are following, the guy was questioning the rationality behind saying do not urinate here, order by police. He was in shock. No parking, ordered by police. He was in shock. Now, and this is somebody who is coming from a society that works, and I'm telling you, he's an African. He's not saying, oh, he's from France, he's from Germany. When we discuss such issues, do you know what they tell you? They'll tell you those people are, they have, they have been, they have been, you know, enjoying democracy for over 200 years. Hmm. Ghana is just three years our senior. Even though Ghana is not the size of Nigeria. But the truth is, if you want things to work, it will work. Yeah. I will end with this quote by JJ Rollins. He said that they were, when he started out, hmm. he said that they were going to build a Ghana that even if it is Lucifer himself, the devil, that wants to preside over the administrative affairs of Ghana, he will do what Ghanaian people want. And that is what we should aim at. Build strong institutions. Create a society where Ile Somi, Omar Duju, Oyelo, where people will think about integrity first and not about amassing wealth, and enforce grabbing wealth. And policies, enforce policies, Very enforce simple. policies. Very simple. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.